Good afternoon, FBLA PBL members, advisors, and guests. Welcome to our Wednesday webinar series. Today's webinar is Getting the Competitive Edge in our Competitive Events. We've had a lot of registrations for this webinar and a lot of great questions already asked, so we'll be sure to answer those questions at the end of this broadcast. If you haven't had a chance to ask your question yet, you can do so now by tweeting it at us, posting it on the event page on Facebook, or even commenting in the video comments. Now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, the two hosts of this wonderful webinar today. First, we have our Education Director and National Staff Member um, in Reston, Virginia, Ms. Barbara Small. And also, we have the Missouri FBLA PBA Chair, and she's also a NAP Committee Member, Ms. Carla Bolton. Ladies, thank you very much for being with us, and the show is yours. Well, Donnie, thank you. I'm excited to be here, and please excuse me. We've had a little snow here in Reston. You might have heard about Washington, D.C. being closed down. So please excuse if the phone rings or the dog barks at night for us. One thing I want to say to everyone, we have a variety of people on today. We have our FBLA advisors. We have some PBL advisors. I know we have PBL students, some FBLA students, and I even saw we have a few middle-level advisors on. I'm going to try to be broad based and then let you ask your questions. But the first thing I need to tell you is remember you're getting ready for your state competition. I can only tell you what happens at the national level so some of the questions may have to be directed to your state uh, advisor. Remember first thing is always check your state guidelines. Every state varies from our national guidelines. For example for FBLA you might have two or three people that might be able to enter one event. At the national, you may not have that. For Phi Beta Land or PBL, I know many of you are allowed to take several events at your state conference, so please, please check your state guidelines first. One of the things I want to talk about are just the few changes we have this year, which hopefully you know about. If not, let me tell them to you right now. We have up the minutes that e-business, which is only for FBLA and website design, to seven minutes. So when you present to the judges, make sure you do a seven-minute presentation for your website design for both groups and for FBLA e-business. Don't forget, we, are, we will be using for a parliamentary procedure the 11th edition of Robert's Rules of Order. Uh, there aren't that many changes from what I understand, but it will be uh, used at the national level. Don't forget, the one big change we have this year, and this affects both FBLA and PBL, is what we call our individual and team events. For example, website development. For both groups, it can be a one to three. Previously, an individual could compete the second year on the team. Not a problem. Now what we've said is, if you were on a team last year for website development, an individual, one of the team members may now compete as an individual. So it now goes both ways. That's a major change for both groups. Um, another FBLA change is digital design now is a one to three event versus one to two event. For PBL we have retired the computer gaming. Um, for over three years we just didn't have enough entries to make it viable. If we find that we need to move ahead to another type of application, computer application, we will for PBL. We've also renamed for PBL, it's now rather than called Future Business Teacher, we now call it Future Business Educator, which encompasses both, that way you'll be teaching at the middle level, the high school, the, sec uh, the post-secondary level, encompasses all teaching positions now. For FBLA, we have three pilot events I want to emphasize. And a pilot event means for FBLA, you can be in one of the pilot events and also compete in one other activity at national conference. The three pilot events that, that I'm going to be talking about go from the local level to the national level. So you will not be competing at these with these events at the um, at your state conference. The first pilot event is Life Smarts. It's similar to our virtual business management challenge. And right now the competition is going through the 11th. And the top nine teams from each fall and spring will be eligible to compete at national conference. And you will be notified um, in another week or so um, that you're eligible to compete. The other two pilot events are sponsored by Certiport, 
and their Microsoft Office specialist test. We have we'll be doing the mouse in Word Core and Excel Core. What this means is, and these are open till March 31st, so you still have plenty of time to compete in them. We will take the top three winners from each state that's eligible now to move on to the uh, national competition. And again, you'll be notified. There is there might be a cost at your local level, but it's all based on speed and timing and accuracy. So go onto our website on our national website, and you'll see a link to it. It'll tell you everything you want to know, and it's not too late to enter it. Also, one other thing for FBLA, because we've gotten a lot of questions, the virtual business finance is not a competitive event this year. It's only just what I call a contest. Um, but I understand that $500 will be set to the top winner in it for spring, and we already sent it for fall. So that's just looking ahead for the game. A couple things. People always want to know, what can I study? How do I get prepared for events? Well, there are several things. Number one, on the website, if you go to the FBLA national website and click on either FBLA or for PBL, click to competitive events, you're going to see a new called a reference guide, a resource guide. If you click on that, you're going to see all your guidelines, you're going to see sample questions, you're going to see uh, more defined uh, for the objective test what we call competencies and tasks. So for example, if you're selecting accounting, accounting, you might see that the task would be questions on accounts payable, receivable, balance sheets, income statements. You're going to see a lot more detail on that. Also, for case studies, you might find some, um, you're going to see a video on some of the case studies. You also have a case study. So that's a perfect place to start with. Another thing is, if you're in interview events, find people to interview you. Go Google out and find a lot of questions, have a variety of people interview you. The one thing I do want to say that is very confusing for FBLA, we changed this for PBL, for a job interview, you're interviewing for a fictitious company, Merit Corporation, even at the state level. You choose the type of company you want Merit to be. You choose the job you qualify for. So for the high school, very honestly, you might uh, qualify for administrative assistant or entry-level uh, webmaster, a web uh, person. But make sure the job is what you feel you're qualified for. It could be a summer job, an internship, or full-time upon graduation. That's up to you to establish the type of company and the type of job you want. When you're talking about the reports, and for PBL now, we really only have the Small Business Management Plan and Community Service Report and local chapter. And for FBLA, we have five reports. Please make sure you read the guidelines. The cover is where you're going to lose points. Um, so make sure you have all your details in order. Collaborative tests. Oh, these are fun. Thinking about like management decision making for FBLA or um, entrepreneurship for PBL, business decision making, all your strategic analysis and analysis te uh, decision analysis tests. As a team, one to three or two to three, you're going to collaborate on one computer or one Scantron. Again, depends how your state operates it. That's all I can say. At nationals now, many states may not have a performance event for these type of tests. Um, again, you have to check with your state. One other thing is the role-playing events. If you have a performance event and it's a role-playing event, keep in mind if they're all about seven minutes long and the judges are going to be interacting with you. So be expected to be interrupted by judges um, and have fun doing it. Again, no answer is going to be really a wrong answer. It's how you present. Make sure all your team members speak and you'll be fine. Carla, do you have any more to say about preparing? I think the um, general topics you hit there are really good. We're getting some good questions in that I think will pick up some of the things that we might not have brought up. But um, like you said, going to the website, looking at the rating sheets, um, using the online reference guide, those are the key things for any, any competition, just knowing what is expected of you, knowing what the topics are, and knowing what those rating sheets say for the judges. Those the most key things regardless of, of what state but again like you said we need to, to pay attention to you know what our state contests are before we come to nationals so everybody's just a little bit different okay Donnie I'm gonna open up to questions now well we have a lot that have been asked during registration and we have a couple that have come okay. so I'm gonna hit the live ones first um, just to remind everyone you can still ask questions by posting questions in the comment section of the YouTube video on our event page on Facebook or by tweeting to them, uh, tweeting to us at FBLA underscore national. Um, so the first question is from Candy Nicole um, in Illinois PBL. 
And her question is, um, what is the best way to approach uh, competing with someone? Like, is there a proper way to present in a presentation team event as opposed to a single presentation event? Okay, if you're talking about a team event, as a team member, let's say in a presentation, like it could be, it could be um, some of the role playing things, you're going to get a case study. You as a team have to sit there and decide who's going to present what part of it. Um, as simple as that, because you all don't want to be, you know, talk all at the same time. So it's very important to you have 20 minutes. I mean, you have a very short time to look at it, but you have 20 minutes to present. If you're doing something like a report, you know, like your small business management plan, um, and it, it turns out there's two or three of you presenting. Again, before you get there, you need to figure out which uh, parts of that report are you going to present to the judges. And remember. Everything should be based on your rating sheet. Look at your rating sheets to see what the judges are going to be using to grade you. And then make sure you practice. Anything that you can do beforehand in practice, and please do. And you just have to decide which role everyone has. But everyone has to present. That's the key. If one person doesn't present, you will lose points. It sounds like a, a lot of what you said was plan before going, you know, plan yes. and practice. Um, the next question is was a question asked on our YouTube comments from Matt. His question is, if one of his members wins their state event and that event is an objective test, will they have to compete in another objective test at national conference? Um, yes. If they win, I'm not sure um, whether it's FBLA, PBL, but yes. Bottom line is there's a next level. They will they compete whatever they compete at, at their state conference and they win in advance. They'll be competing in the same event at national. If it was a written event at state, It'll be a written event at national, and maybe a two-parter. It depends on the event. Awesome. Uh, next question is Jerry Small posted on our Facebook event page. Wants to know uh, what about business ethics? Is that going to be a one-on-one -on -one competition? Is this FBLA or PBL? Uh, not specified. Can you give us both? Okay. For FBLA this year, next year, stay tuned for new changes. But this year for FBLA, it's a team event, a two or three-member team, and sim similar to impromptu speaking. Um, they will have, I mean, they'll be given a topic, they'll have X numbers to look at it, and then they'll have to present it. For PBL, um, there is a topic in the handbook, and I'm sorry if I don't have my handbook in, at home with me to tell you, but you need to look at your guidelines in the handbook for PBL, and it's a research topic. Uh, you have to send in a, no more than a two-page synopsis of it. Um, I'm not, at, to the state, I'm not sure what you do, and then you present, you present that and it's uh, again, it's a team event at PBL as well, two to three. Great, thanks. The next question um, comes from Twitter, and was this is a question for Carla? Um, what type of display materials do you think would be best for the community service project during the presentation? I think that depends on what the the topic has been. It's always good to you know, bring some kind of, of thing in, especially at, at the national level. I have seen in the last few years all kinds of things brought in um, for the different reports, but just to have something um, to show what that project was about, um, whether if you've done a backpack buddy project for community service, maybe bringing in a sample of the backpack or some of the, a big poster of what you've had, or if you did a blood drive, maybe, you know, some of the t-shirts are something that you've had there, but you know you don't have to go overboard, but it, it's nice to have a little bit of something. But one key thing about that, that that trips some of our people up is, remember, you cannot leave anything in the room with the judges. So whatever you bring in, you be sure that you take out. Yeah. And, and uh, you also wouldn't want to distract from your presentation right. with whatever you bring in, too. Let me add one more thing, too, that where a lot of people, anytime you use technology, Sometimes technology may not work at, at your conference. And guess what, guys? You better be able to present without the technology. I mean, you have to be prepared because that you always have that glitch. There is nothing that can be done. You have you're on a time process. Make sure you can you know your your project so you can present it without the technology. And screenshots are wonderful things. If I can make a comment on that, seeing a state team before competing at state where their computer and projector just ended up not working and they actually still ended up placing second um, just because of the way that they held their composure uh, not having technology because the judges do recognize things happen and it's, your, it's how you handle the situation. Mm -hmm. So um, the next question is from Katie from Colorado. Uh, Katie wanted to know, she, you might have said it already but she didn't catch it, um, have any of PDL's events had time changes? 
Um, the only time change is website development. It's been to seven minutes. Everything else is the same time. Great. Um, the next question is from Colorado FBLA from Vicky. She wants to know, um, would it be allowed or permissible for them to use iPads for each judge during the presentation for electronic portfolio so they could view the website while the student is presenting? Well, that's an interesting question. <laughs> um, Carla, Carla is a state person. I, I, can re I can refer to that's a very interesting question that we haven't heard of. You can use an iPad to display if you had an LCD monitor attached to it. That's not even an issue. If I'm hearing you right, Donna, it was like, can they present, give an iPad to each of the judges to see? Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, ma'am. Um, Are they going to provide the internet for it? Yeah. Will they, that, part of it's internet. How, are they, how will they get on the internet? That would be the question. Um, that's a very good question that I'll write down for future yeah, um, thoughts a, for the NAP committee. But right good now, use of technology. Yes, technology. Right now at nationals, we would have we have one. Um, we do have internet access for one person, mm -hmm. so it'd just be for one device. You know, when we present, so it's just something that we will think about. And whoever presented that, I would love for you just to email us that, so we have it for us to discuss at the next NAP meeting. It, and we actually have Vicky's email address, so we'll, we'll be in touch with you. Okay. Um, awesome. Good question. Uh, the next question is from Kate in Mississippi FBLA. Uh, he wants to know what tools are best to use for preparing for um, our presentation events. So some that she gave us were impromptu speaking, business procedures, global business, business pres, business financial plan. What tools would you recommend to prepare for those events? I'm going to have to tell Carla to speak on that right now. I would, you know, if you can find any videos of any of these presentations that have been done before or if um, you have an opportunity to watch any of these events um, at your state or national conferences, I think that that's a really good way to see how it can be done. But then, uh, you know, just practicing, maybe have an advisor make up a bunch of topics for you for your uh, a team meeting, a uh, chapter meeting, and just practice doing things. Um, speech coaches are wonderful resources for practicing on those presentations. Just talking off the, learning how to talk off the top of your head takes a little bit of practice. Look in the mirror. One of the things that when I was when I was in high school, I remember the speeches. That someone said, uh, "Speak in front of a mirror so you can see yourself and see your expressions." Great question. Um, the next question I have is from Miguel. Um, he asked on our YouTube channel, "Can we compete as a um, can we compete as a team with different campuses of the same school?" So this is more geared towards PBL when one school may have different campuses around the um, the system. They might only have one chapter though that services all the campuses. That would be up to the state. It's totally up to the state how the state runs it. Um, the state tells me who's competing. I have no control as to where they're coming from, so that's a state decision, not my, not a national decision. Okay, so Miguel, if you want to talk to your state advisor about that, they should have an answer. Uh, the next question is from Carla of Georgia, FBLA. Want to know what the best resources to use are um, for an online event that the there might not have um, a program for in school, so nothing's taught on that subject, or they might not have a textbook for that in the school. Well, a couple things, and Carl can put into it. Number one, we do have a study guide. It only has 30 questions, but it gives you something. Go on again. If you go on to the reference page, go on to our website, the national website, and select the online reference page, you're going to see and pull down like the performance indicators. You're going to see more details as to what the test covers. Um, so you could have a topic. Like I say, account accounts payable, but you might have 10 items underneath that. So it gives you more details. Find teachers in your school, as especially high school teachers get a lot of complimentary books from publishers. Mm -hmm. Your teachers have a tremendous amount of different books they may not use for teaching. If it's if it's something with math or something, go to your math department. I mean, if it's something with technology, go to your IT department. You have, you know, it could be through the math department. Go, you can find books there. The library also might have some books. Also, very honestly, if you Google online, it's amazing what you can find. Um, questions. You might want to find technology questions. Um, that's the best thing I can tell you. Carla, anything more to add to that? No, uh, Google's my best friend. Um, we've had a lot of success with students finding study materials there. 
Um, but back to what you said about the textbooks, you know, nobody's going to have time to read an entire textbook, but a, a veteran advisor told me at one time when I asked this same question, just have the kids study the glossary, you know, just look through that glossary of, of a topic that maybe is not taught at a school, and that really at least gives a, a starting place. First yeah, that's some great answers. So, come in from uh, people saying, I need practice questions for word processing one, and you uh, practice tests mm -hmm. for sports management, healthcare admin, cybersecurity. Um, can you ladies touch on that? Do we have that available? All the questions we have for everything is available through the study guides that can be purchased through Marketplace. We have, there's 30 questions. We have like 10 questions online free that you can see in the reference guide, but each of the study guides are up to date. And they do, they do have sample questions. They do have sample questions and sample case studies. Great. Um, the next question I have is actually about the CMAP awards. Um, so I'm going to ask that, see if you guys know the answer. If not, I might be able to pull one out. But uh, Jerry um, from North Carolina just completed the first level of CMAP, and he wants to know if he needs anything else um, to be recognized at the state level, or will he be recognized for um, or will he even be recognized for completing that level, um, the first level of CMAP? Um, from what I understand, and Donnie, help me, the first level, I think, is just recognition from, from ours with a, with a pin and certificate. And it's to be presented locally. Yeah, presented locally. It's not a state. We don't, it's a, the top level is what's presented at state. And I would say that would be a state decision. We, we try, in Missouri, for our PBL, we try to recognize all of our people. So, so again, um, check with your state. And I, I know the way that it's set up, the, at least where we send the pins, the first level um, we send to your local chapter advisor. I believe the second level we send to your state advisor to be presented at a state conference. And that third level you don't receive until you come to the national conference, or if you can't make it to nationals, we'll send it after. But you do get recognized during your national regional breakout if you attend the NLC. So that's another reason to attend the NLC. Um, this question is from Timmy. He wants to know, are note cards allowed in presentation events such as digital video production in case something happens with the computer? You're always allowed to bring in notes. There's nothing saying you can't. Be careful, though. Yeah, any time of a presentation that you're doing, your note cards are fine. But be careful. You don't want to read from them. Um, I think of like an improv. I think of like public speaking when when someone just uses note cards and reads totally from them, I can guarantee the judge is going to mark you down all the way. So no cards can be used as, as just as something to hold on to for that nervousness you might have. Yes, you, you're welcome to bring them in. Just make sure you don't leave anything. But also, please don't read them. Make sure you know it. It could be just bullet points. But yes, there's no penalty with that. Um, similar question from Tim, Tim Clark and PBL wants to know, for website design, is there going to be any points deducted for using screenshots? in a presentation. The websites, keep in mind, at the national level, okay, and again, I can only refer to now at the national level. The national level, the websites have already been prejudged. So your design and everything has been prejudged. So look at your, when you, at the national level, once you, it, so that's done in May. Um, when you present, it's a different thing. Um, this, you're just showing them, it could be just screenshots, yes. I mean, you at the national, you will have internet access to it. Um, again, I don't know about your state, but keep in mind, at the national, we are prejudged, so you shouldn't have any problems with just screenshots. A lot of people might just have that. Great. Um, the next question is from an FBLA um, advisor asking if the president um, could compete in at least two different competitions. It's up to your state. At national, if you're FBLA at national, it can only be, I'm assuming president of the local chapter, president of your state, I'm not sure um, what they're asking. It's, that to me is totally a, uh, a state issue as to whether, how, whether they can pres you know, present at the state. At the national level, FBLA can only be in one event. That's, you know, that's what I can tell you there. Next question, thank you very much, is from Bo Cobb of Tennessee PBL. Wants to know how he can go about promoting a new competitive event. Um, for example, logistics is a growing major at University of Tennessee. Now. I love it. Okay, Carla is on, currently on the National Awards Program Committee. We have um, five representatives of state people and local advisors serving them for FBLA and for PBL. We meet every fall to go over new events. So all you have to do, if you look in your handbook, 
you just have to submit it, just email it to education at fbla.org, your suggestions. But look in your handbook under uh, under the competitive event section. Tell us what you need to do, and we would love for you to submit a new event with some details, and we'll review it in September at our meeting. Awesome. Next question is from New Jersey FBLA. Um, give us three tips for impromptu speaking. Carl, I'll let you see what you have, then I'll add lib if I have to. <laughs> Well, impromptu speaking is going to be based over the FBLA goals, right? Yes. In general? No? Okay. So, uh, you know, I would be familiar with those. Um, have maybe a, a standard opening and closing in your head of, of no matter what the topic is so that you're going to start off um, the same regardless. You know, I am so-and-so from whatever state or whatever school. And uh, let's see, know the goals standard opening, and just be confident. Whether or not you are or not, show to those judges that you own the world. Let me add two more things. Eye contact is very, very important, and she said confidence. Also, timing. You are penalized 30 seconds under or over the four-minute thing, So, and you only have a 10-minute prep time because it is impromptu, so it's going to be harder. You, you will be given note cards, so you do have some note cards you can refer to, but you're just going to have to ad lib it and and do the best you can. Great. The next question I think is an extremely good correct question. <laughs> we'll definitely ask this one on the six o'clock as well. Um, but this is from Lacey in Mississippi FBLA middle level. But I think this question applies to all divisions. And it's how do you handle, um, for example, um, client service is a role playing situation when the script is not followed by the judges. So how would you handle a situation when the judges are supposed to role play and they don't? Or how do you handle a situation when the judges aren't supposed to role play and they do? Well, you you just go along with the judges. They're the ones that are going to be evaluating. There's nothing you can do. We try to make sure that the judges understand what they're doing, but you always have one or two that might want to go out on their own. And also we can do is ask from the judges is hopefully they're consistent with everyone. So. It may something happen to you like that, but I would I would hope that they're consistent with everyone else so that everyone is at the same penalty. What we always ask that at the national level is just we always have our state people overseeing the events and our NAP people there is if this happens, we said to please let us know. But once it happens one time, we then tell the judges they have to continue that same process so that everyone is evaluated the same way. Carla, what about uh, state when that happens to you at state? I would say the exact same thing. You know, we, we review, we send guidelines, we hope that the judges, you know, know what to do, but some, you know, we can't be in every room all the time, so, you know, we just have to hope that all of our judges are consistent. Awesome. That is a, definitely a relevant question. <laughs> um, I have another question. This came from Oregon FBLA. Um, it is for you, Barbara, because okay. I don't know the answer. Um, what is the new courtesy core? What is the new courtesy core? Yes. I, I don't have any idea. I'm not, I don't know. Is it a nat, uh, if I, I will have to find out if it's a national and I, from Oregon, I will have to find out and get back to that person. I just don't know. All right. And hold on. I thought we were out of questions, but I just got another one. Um, I'm going to write that down though. Okay. Here's another question. Um, for role play events, is it correct that points will not get to going over time? Meaning your time is um, your time is ended and now it's time for Q and A and role playing. Um, okay. Will you get charged with going over time if the judges are asking you questions? If it's a role play, no. There's no penalty for role play when it's interactive. There's still a couple of, uh, like for example, um, I'm trying to think. I think we're trying to make all, most of them role play, so there's no penalty points, you know, taken off for that. If there's a Q&A, for example, any reports, any of your uh, like business presentation, website, e-business, those are present, and then a three-minute Q&A. So if you go over that time, you are you are penalized. But any of your role play for your performance events, if they're role play interactive, no, there's no penalty points. Awesome. All right. Well, it looks like that's all the questions we've gotten for the four o'clock. 
webinar. I think this was really great. Had a lot of interaction, a lot of really great questions. Thank you, ladies, for taking your time to speak to our members and advisors. Uh, we thank you all for attending. Be sure to attend our next webinar Wednesday, which will take place March 27th. This will be hosted, a special webinar for us, by the March of Dimes. So be sure to uh, RSVP for that event on Facebook. Also look out for that email that we'll be sending to all the advisors. In addition, we'll be repeating this webinar at 6, six o'clock with brand new questions um, that are reserved for the 6 o'clock webinar. And you'll be free to ask more questions. So if you thought of a question or think of a question right after after we're done, feel free to, again, tweet at us, Facebook message us, post it on our Facebook wall, comment in the video, or fill out that form and ask us another question. We'll have an updated list at 6 o'clock tonight. So from all of us at FBLA PBL, have a great evening.